Hello, I'm Dr. Sam, this is Dr. Sam's Health, and today I'm going to do a book review. And to be specific, I'm going to talk about this wonderful book, which is called The Essentials of Strength and Conditioning. And the reason why I would like to talk about this book is because I recently passed my Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist exam, and this exam is pretty much based on this tome. Since I had to read this book from A to Z, actually a couple of times to take a lot of notes and to absorb all this information. And I think that the fact that I passed my exam is actually a good proof that I have mastered this textbook. Uh, I think it's a good time for me to talk about this book. This book was recommended to me multiple times by Google, by Amazon, pretty much every time I would search for some uh, fitness related content, this book would pop up and eventually I bought it. It was the third edition then. And when I started reading this book, I realized that it's actually really full of content. I was very pleasantly surprised with the quality and the scope of this textbook. After having read several chapters of the third edition of the book, I realized that I actually really want to take the exam. So I called the National Strength and Conditioning Association, asked for advice, and they suggested that I get the the fourth edition of the book, or to be more specific, a course that includes the fourth edition of the book. I will talk about the course in my next video, but in this one I would like to focus on the actual textbook. I've spent a lot of time with it, and I think I'm a good person and I'm in a good moment of my life to talk about this book, just because I've taken this exam like three weeks ago. So let's start the review. The very first question I would ask myself is whether this book is worth buying if you are taking CSCS exam. The answer is 100% yes, because the exam itself is based on this book. The second question I would ask myself is whether this book is sufficient to take and pass this exam. And I would say that uh, not really. You have to look up a number of things in order to have more complete knowledge and to come to your exam prepared. And of course, there will be lots of people who would consider buying this book who will not plan to take the CSCS exam. And I think it's totally fine. This book is actually contains a wealth of knowledge on different aspects of exercise physiology, uh, certain elements of anatomy. I'll talk about this a little bit more uh, about programming. It talks about the general adaptation syndrome, about psychology of exercise and so on and so on and so on. I 100% recommend this book for pretty much any strength and conditioning related purposes. At this point, it might sound that the book is ideal, and I must say it isn't. It has some shortcomings, and I would like to cover them in this video so that hopefully they can improve it in the next edition. First of all, quite a few topics are too vague, too general, or too complicated to be practical. A good example would be the chapter on biomechanics. They talk at length about physics, they talk about different classes of levers. This is a particular point I don't understand why it was included into the book in general. And you might have a question or two about the classes of levers. So they'll give you an example uh, of certain joints, certain muscles doing their work, and they will ask you what kind of lever it is. To be honest, I have no idea why anybody would need this kind of information when they are designing a program for somebody, including themselves. Another example would be the anatomical planes. They talk a lot about the anatomical planes, like sagittal plane, transverse plane, frontal plane, and then there will be questions about certain movements, and they will ask in which plane this movement is happening. In my understanding, this topic is highly overrated. It has purely academic interest. You don't really need this information for program design, for choosing exercises or for doing exercises. Unless you are like a hardcore anatomist, you really don't need to know about this anatomical planes, let alone focusing a couple of questions of the exam on that. The second issue is the tendency to start talking about something, get into lots of basic details, but to finish and wrap up this topic just short of giving you a good understanding of what they are talking about. It's actually a little bit hard for me to give you a solid example because I haven't read this book in a couple of weeks already and uh, the subjects are kind of subtle, but you will understand what I'm talking about when you will be reading the book. So as you read the book, you will see that, you know, you're reading, you have read several pages, there were lots of redundancy here and there, and then in the end of the day, you end up feeling a little bit intellectually dissatisfied because you have a gist of the concept, but you don't have enough details and you have to actually 
search for information elsewhere. Maybe a couple of good examples would be the onset of blood lactate accumulation or the general adaptation syndrome. I literally had to search for the information in the internet to check the references and I'll talk about references separately uh, in order to get much better, much more comprehensive understanding of this topics. And I believe that these topics are actually critical for our CSCS, unlike classes of levers or anatomical planes. And speaking of anatomical planes and anatomy in general, I was really surprised not to find a good description of musculoskeletal anatomy in a book completely dedicated to strength and conditioning. So we're talking about exercises, we're talking about anatomical planes, we're talking about joints, about physics, about biomechanics, we're talking about energy, biochemistry, but you have to know your major muscles and your major bones and your major joints. And unfortunately, this book doesn't have this information. And spoiler alert, the course I'll be talking about in my next video doesn't have this information either. This is a major shortcoming and I hope that you will be able to add a chapter on that because this is critical. On the positive side, the book comes with a nice video guide to multiple exercise techniques and uh, as somebody who never worked as a personal trainer and pretty much I have learned most of the exercise techniques by myself, by reading some books, knowing anatomy, checking YouTube videos, I found it very to be very, very helpful. I hope that they will continue, they'll expand the range of these exercises and this part of the book is completely commendable and simply amazing. Also, they have some video questions about the exercise techniques, so this part was good for both the exam preparation and for practical usage. Okay, the fourth item is the location of references. It might sound like a very artificial and very minor shortcoming, but for people like myself it's actually a larger thing. This book is technically a textbook and it's technically a reference book. It has lots of references. It's supposed to have all the wealth of information. It should always be up to date. The book is more or less up to date, but every time I want to check something, I have to go in the back of the book. All the references are located in the back of the book, not in the end of each chapter. And they are still classified or separated by chapters. So, for example, if I'm looking for reference number 55 in chapter 3, I'm opening the book in the end, and in the end, I can easily pick reference, num reference number 55, and it will turn out to be reference 55 from chapter 7. And obviously, it's not the same reference I'm looking for. If you're using a tablet, if you're reading it on Kindle, it becomes even more cumbersome because you have to switch from one part of the book to another part of the book. It doesn't work for people like myself. I would really appreciate the references being moved to the end of each chapter and preferably the references should not be numeric you know sometimes they put it like reference number three four five uh, in the text instead i would like to have the author name and the year the reason why i'm suggesting this is the following when you're reading the text and you don't care about references the numeric style is kind of okay but when you're reading the text and you want to know the frame of reference it is much better to have the name and the year. They refer to a lot of articles published in like 1970s, 80s, 90s, and we are approaching 2020 already. So it's very good to have a grasp, the basic understanding of what they're referring to instead of you know, having to go to the end of the book, finding the reference and figuring out that it was published in 1959. So that's all I want to say about the references. I know for majority of people it would be a very minor issue, but for myself it's kind of a big deal. I would love to have references in the immediate vicinity of the text. Okay, let's move to more substantial things. My next item is the use of my plate. I know that a lot of people have heard about my plate, a lot of people are using my plate, the government recommends my plate, and uh, as writers of a textbook you cannot omit this kind of information, you had to include my plate. But personally, I think it's one of the silliest ways of actually conceptualizing the nutrition. I will make a special video about my plate, why it's illogical, why it's not really evidence-based, it's consensus-based, and I find it to be very unfair to pretty much force this 
very imperfect system on those who are reading this book and who are preparing to become certified strength and conditioning specialists. So if you are going to become a personal trainer or strength and conditioning specialist, you effectively you have to check out this my plate, memorize lots of bogus numbers, and when you have your exam, you pretty much have to regurgitate these numbers. You have to calculate certain things. They will ask you what is the recommendations from my plate in terms of consumption of say green vegetables and so on which again is a ridiculous thing so that is the second major pet peeve of this book i think it's fair to say that i don't believe in my plate and i think that the information like that should be added to the book only as a reference as just one of the options we've got much better dietary systems and again i will talk about them in my future videos but I don't think it's appropriate to add this kind of information into this kind of book and to force people to memorize it. Okay, the next item is just multiple little things that really annoyed me when I was reading this book. So I made a goal of reading this book from A to Z. There is a lot of vagueness, there are lots of general statements that, you know, they serve no purpose. I think that all textbooks tend to have them, but in the end of the day, when you are reading multiple, multiple pages of text, and at the end of the day you realize it's just like read four paragraphs that have no meaning whatsoever it's kind of redundant there are actually some factual errors like cunningham formula for example it has number 550 instead of 500 uh, things like that in line with that goes the redundancy there are some things that are touched a couple of times but never actually explained in full detail like for example the general adaptation syndrome it's mentioned at the very beginning they start talking about it, they provide you with a table and then they kind of wrap up the conversation without finishing talking about it and then it resurfaces closer to the end in the periodization chapter speaking of the tables the book has multiple reference tables that apparently we all have to memorize in order to pass the exam and i must say that it was a huge nuisance at a certain point because i realized that i have to memorize lots of information about different testing techniques so for example we're testing one rep maximum and they would give you a table with percentiles for different ages different sexes and there are lots and lots of numbers that will likely be tested on the real exam and just to make sure that i'm making myself clear on my exam i had multiple questions where they would give you an athlete and they will tell you that the performance of this athlete is so and so for example it's a male collegiate athlete who is able to bench press 200 pounds is it a good result or not and they would actually give you multiple exercises and each exercise will have its like score and you would have to somehow memorize all the information in this tables in the textbook which normally people would just refer to as they practice and come to a certain conclusion. Here I must say that I don't think it's a problem of the book. It's actually a very nice part of the book because it's good to have some sort of reference tables. But I think it's not fair to test this kind of information in the exam because nobody ever memorizes all this stuff and nobody needs all kinds of reference values for all kinds of sports. You only need two or three, maybe like 10 different values that you actually use as a guidance in your particular sport that you are doing or you're practicing or you are teaching okay my last point i already spoke about how i disagreed with the information about my plate included into the nutrition chapter whereas the nutrition chapter itself was just great uh, i'm a psychiatrist and i'm a researcher and it was very difficult for me to go through the chapters on research and uh, on psychology of training. On one hand, I was pleasantly surprised with certain things that were presented there. The scope of information was actually really, really good, but it was very odd for me to read certain things like the definition of anxiety was very, very odd, to be honest. Or, for example, they're talking about eating disorders, about anorexia nervosa, about binge eating disorder, bulimia nervosa, and so on. And I found these topics to be a little bit odd or weirdly worded. Uh, it's actually very hard for me to describe what I'm disagreeing with, but I would say it's the amount of information. So they found some sort of a medium between just mentioning these conditions and giving a comprehensive review of them. And uh, I think that if you are 
just going to be a personal trainer or a certified strength and conditioning specialist, you're not supposed to treat these people. You're supposed to be able to identify these conditions and a couple of statements about them would be sufficient. But in reality, I know for sure that there are questions about these conditions on the real exam that will ask you about certain diagnostic criteria. So you are supposed to act as a trained psychiatrist. I don't think it's fair. And in general, the number of items there that are um, overly simplified or overly complicated. And uh, I think that these chapters would require some refinement. And I'd like to add something positive to that. In general, this chapter is actually very, very nice. I actually discovered a couple of things that were new to me. Uh, or I found some nice references that I could explore and a uh, couple of things were actually amazingly well described. Like for example the concepts of validity and reliability of tests were described in such great detail. It was just amazing. I actually I haven't seen this good of a description in many statistical books and in this textbook they were described just brilliantly. I really appreciated this part. Okay I think it's time to sum it up and my general conclusion or summary of what I was talking about, this is an amazing book. It would be really, really useful for you if you're going to prepare for the CSCS exam or even if you're just somebody who's very curious about strength and condition, this book will be an amazing aid to you. It does have some shortcomings and only a couple of them are really serious, like the absence of the musculoskeletal anatomy chapter or comprehensive information about musculoskeletal anatomy and a couple of minor errors. But otherwise the book is just amazing. I highly recommend getting it. There is also some sort of a companion online course provided by NSCA for those who are very serious about their preparation. And uh, I have taken this course. I'm going to review it in my next video. So stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel. Also check out my website drsamshealth.com. We've got lots of useful information for you there. And it's time to wrap up this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you did. Uh, thank you for commenting for your contribution. And I'll see you in my next video. All the best.